hey guys how you doing i hope each and every one of you is feeling safe out there um i'm excited to get uh, questions from you and thank you by the way thank you for watching the video um i'm gonna take some of your questions here and again if i don't go as deep as you guys would expect please um just send follow-up questions to dr chris fanman and he will forward them to me um so i'm also getting used to this video thing as well and i'm gonna try by all means not to make it too long so sometimes i'm just gonna touch uh, important points and um, if you guys feel like you want more clarity i'll be happy to get questions from you so please don't hesitate so i'm going to take the first question that says uh, did he know all along that he wanted to continue on and in his master's degree what drove the decision okay so from a very early age i knew that i wanted to do a master's and i knew that i wanted to uh, improve on my skill and uh, expand my reach in what i do um, what drove him to that decision well you know um if you are passionate about something you are always looking for ways to make it better and uh, to improve on it so uh, for me a master's was a way to really test myself and push myself push my limits and uh, be surrounded by people who are like-minded people who are passionate and people who are professional so my mfa was really a big step to me and uh, the driving factor was just to make myself better to improve what i do so that was uh, the driving force but i think i've known that i wanted to do a masters uh, since 2005 i think uh, after i graduated with my uh, diploma i knew that at some point i would want to do a masters second question is what obstacles has he faced during that time what were the biggest changes for him after he graduated with his bachelor's so uh i have to say that i do not have a bachelor's degree in art i have a diploma which is a three-year uh, degree it's different from a bachelor's uh, i didn't get a chance to do my bachelor's uh, because of certain um, economic challenges and responsibilities that I had at that time in Zimbabwe. So my bachelor's degree was, uh, my diploma was uh, from a place called, wow, sounds like gunshots. Wow, crazy. So my um, national diploma was from a place called uh, Harare Polytechnic in Zimbabwe. And... Um, after that, I wanted to do a bachelor's, but uh, things were just not in a good place. Economically, I had a lot of responsibilities to take care of, and I ended up not doing it. Uh, but one thing that I did was I made sure that I pushed myself so much uh, that I um, improved my craft, improved my ideas. Uh, during that time that I was unable to do a bachelor's degree. Uh, so in 2017, no, actually 2016, I applied to do a master's degree at the University of Michigan in the U.S. And um, I knew that I had practiced for a while and I was mature in my practice. And I, I knew that I'm beyond a bachelor's already. So I applied uh, to do a master's. And uh, I was accepted even though I did not have a bachelor's degree, uh, but I had a very strong portfolio. And um, that showed a lot of direction, a lot of maturity in the way that I did things. So I don't have a bachelor's degree, but I have a national diploma. Um, but some of the challenges, of course, were economic challenges that I could not afford to get myself um, a bachelor into a bachelor's degree program at that time. Uh, but also, you know, studio-wise, I didn't have a proper studio. I was working in my small room at home. And um, 
you are also trying to survive, you know, because you want to sustain your practice. So um, at that time, also selling work was kind of difficult, trying to get a gallery to work with me. Um, but I found ways, you know, I found ways of doing uh, small jobs for people. Sometimes I would draw portraits for people, which is not my favorite thing, but I would have to do it to get some money and just make pretty pictures for people and uh, raise some money to continue sustain my practice. Hmm. How do you network? I know you mentioned a little bit about you, about networking. But how do you make yourself known in other parts of the world? So networking is a very important skill. It's a, it's a skill that you must have, regardless of whether you're going to be an artist or not. Um, so I network. The first thing is you, you've, you've got to have um, good intentions. Do not network so that you can use people to push yourself forward. You must always be genuine. Start from a point of genuine friendship with people. Uh, respect is uh, number one. So, and uh, be bold enough to approach people and let people know what you're doing, you know. Uh, get to people and tell them what you're doing and tell them what you are excited about. But also uh, listen well when people speak, you know, so that you are genuinely interested in what they are interested in. So networking is a two-way thing. It's not only about your interests, but it's about their interests. Uh, so I would say just start from a basic point of genuine friendship. That's how you, you build networks. And as you grow uh, in friendships and in trust, then you can begin to propose things. And you can begin sometimes to ask for things or to propose partnerships. So this, yeah, in a, in a, in a nutshell, that's what I would say about... Uh, networking how what what do you do to make you, yourself known in other parts of the world so the internet is a, a, an amazing tool right um, uh, Instagram is a very very good place to throw images uh, of what you're doing of your studio of what you're interested in of your work so I think that's number one um, and also if you can have a website it's cool I, I don't really have a website right now. I have a website, but it's under construction. I'm not proud of it. I'm working on a professional one. I never really used a website that much because I was also always um, uh, pushing my work um, in other ways. But a website is recommended. Very, very important if you want people to see what you're doing. Maybe your Facebook page too, but I don't post much of my work on my Facebook page. Instagram is good. I do, that's where I put uh, lots of my work and um, I follow people who are interested in what I'm interested in. I follow galleries that I like. So you must learn how to use hashtags. You know, it's very important to know how to use hashtags and how to tag important people. Uh, but also um, approach galleries, you know, if you can get a portfolio together and walk up to a gallery, share your portfolio with them. Half of them might never come back to you, but it doesn't matter. At least they know you. Um, get some friends in the uh, media or the newspaper people. Get them to write about you. I have, a, I don't know, I have a folder there which maybe I can share with you guys and show you. At some point, in maybe in the next video, I have a folder of about 130 newspaper articles that are written about me. So, uh, get people in the newspapers, in the tabloids, in television to know what you're doing. Make friends with them, go to important events, uh, meet people. Uh, always have an elevator pitch. Teach yourself to say, everything that you're doing and that you're interested in in one minute. One minute is all you get. So that's how you get a uh, no. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, how did I make myself known in other parts of the world? So sometimes it's just one 
sometimes you need just one break if you can get somebody who can um, introduce you to people and then the one thing leads to another but uh, I think the basic thing is be proactive don't wait for the world to come to you don't wait for things to happen you need to be proactive and um, yeah be kind to people be good to people smile a lot the third question is I think it's cool that you were able to activate sculptures I don't think I've really seen that kind of art so you need to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, check out some of the work that I'm doing there which mostly is activation of sculpture what's your inspiration for wanting to create these things I know you had a fascination with it but was, was there a leading cause that made you want to explore sound with art so I've always been interested in making sounds and in a little bit of music I was in a couple of bands I uh, wrote a few songs I have uh, been a backing vocalist for many people in Zimbabwe so music sound was just part of my growing up um, but um, so when I was making sculptures they had a musical reference to it but that wasn't enough for me because I said that I really need to push this thing so part of exploring sound was following up on the references that were in my work trying to Go beyond just a reference but to, to make this thing some kind of an instrument um, also sound is a very broad field it's a field that is uh, getting a lot of attention these days people are talking about sound and politics and identity and uh, power dynamics so uh, for instance I'll give you an example so sound exists on a spectrum which is from the loud to the unheard or to the sounds that you cannot hear so they are very loud sounds but they are also sounds that are almost uh, non-oral and some that are non-oral you cannot hear them but they are sounds they exist on a spectrum so that spectrum is a metaphor for power for people um, it's, it's a, it's a it's a metaphor for how the society is configured that there are people whose voices are more audible than others and why is that maybe it's history how can we engage with that in the society there are people whose um, ideas are more visible than others why is that so sound is a field that has brought together all these interesting politics in it so um, I, I am very fascinated by the ability of sound to um, capture all these interesting things in itself. So that was one of the motivations for me in terms of uh, studying sound. I think that's the last question. It says, could you add some discussion in this personal, on these personal struggles to the question list? Okay, um, I'm not really sure what that question it's demanding but I some of my personal struggles were um, for example like relationships that that didn't work out like maybe a partnership that went bad um, I really struggle with that you know because I I, I I like to have peace with people you know but sometimes it's not always possible sometimes you disagree with some people sometimes you fight so um, I have a couple of personal struggles in that area but I think if you can make friends with everybody if you can forgive quickly and move on um, it's better just to let something go than to keep holding on it um, so that's uh, part of it but also um, maybe hmm, personal struggles maybe. okay I do I I'm a very zealous person I do too many things at one time sometimes so what ends up happening is time gets lost and uh, I get exhausted sometimes it affects the outcome of a project which was supposed to be maybe better 
uh, or finished. So yeah, I have uh, uh, an interest in a lot of things. So sometimes by doing a lot of things at the same time, I miss out on the focus aspect. So that's uh, one personal struggle. And yeah, I think that's what I can say. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. This is 1.43 a.m. And thank you guys for listening. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have uh, additional questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Just forward them to Dr. Chris and uh, you get them to me. I don't mind making another video for you guys. Ciao.